Hello, I am Gary Brantner, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, the Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find those Kickstarters to also back them yourself. And I have a section where I talk about Kickstarters you should know about and all that fun stuff. So, I'm starting out with a, a comic called Vampire Bloodlines. These are both issue ones. I got them from Kickstarter. And uh, let's see here. Let me start with some credits. These are written by Christopher Mayer. Art is by Uelina. I can't pronounce this name. It is M R O C Z K O W S K A. Um, yeah, if any attempt at pronouncing that name, and I would just fail miserably. It is edited by Tara S. Credits. Credits art is by Jorge Cabellos and Dark Shadow Artworks. Special thanks to Maho Matis Salas. So, as you can see here, this is a cosplay cover with Rizian, as she is called on Twitter. And here is the art version of the uh, cover. Um, I really, really did enjoy this story. It was. It was a fun vampire story. I'm a sucker for vampire stories, as you know. And um, it starts off with a uh, a couple named Bianca and Nathan, and they pick up a redhead, and uh, they tell her straight out that um, they are vampires. She knows that she is going to be fed on that night, so they go on a, ni a night picnic. Sorry about that, my ear itched. Uh, they go on a picnic at night, and um, they feed on her, and then the couple, the two vampires, Bianca and Nathan, decide that they're going to go out on a little swim, and so they go into the lake, or ocean, I'm not sure where we are in the story. There is a lighthouse. They go into the water and swim, and uh, while they're out swimming, another vampire shows up, and uh, she feeds on this redhead and finishes her off. And so Bianca and Nathan, set, the, when they went set out, uh, they had no intention of killing this redhead. But uh, that is obviously not the way Lilith wanted to do it. So Lilith comes to Bianca and she, I guess Bianca is the queen of vampires. And Lilith comes to her and she contests it saying, I am the rightful heir of the vampire kingdom, and uh, I'm contesting your right to throne. And Nathan, he's all pissed off, and he leaves. Uh, sorry, I should have warned you, heavy spoilers on this. Um, but, so Nathan, he leaves, and I guess he understood it. I, he didn't understand the situation. He's like, I thought we weren't going to kill her, and but obviously he wasn't paying attention, because he the girl he was with isn't the one that killed her, this newcomer Lilith killed her. So that that's the only part that uh, um, annoyed me, is that he gets mad at uh, Bianca, the queen, for the death of the redhead when he was with her in the water. He clearly knows that she, he had nothing to do with it, but I don't know. It was a little weird. Um, maybe it's just some writing growing pains. I don't know. But overall, it was a good story. The artwork artwork is amazing I love how it I love how the anatomy and proportions are done and uh, the coloring is done really well too so uh, there is a Kickstarter out for it right now to uh, back the second issue and I've already jumped on board with that I'm getting a cosplay cover by Ivy Cosplay as she's known on the Twitters and uh, yeah I will tell you more about the Kickstarter for issue 2 when I get to the Kickstarter section of my videos, but yeah, it is interesting, and it's also it's a shorter comic book. Um, comic books are usually the uh, nine by six, and this looks like it's only six by three. It is kind of shorter. These are printed at Kablam. Kablam, Kablam uh, sent them to me straight from their warehouse. Uh, they have a system where if you run a Kickstarter, they will ship out your Kickstarters. I haven't tried that yet because. Uh, the last Kickstarter I run ran, um, 
everybody wanted a signed issue, so they had to come to me first to be signed, and uh, it didn't. So it didn't work out to the way where I could just have Kablam ship them all out. But yeah, this is really cool. I am getting issue two, and uh, I may have told you too much about the story, but hey, that's where we are right now. If you want to jump, if you thought that was cool, you want to jump in on it. Um, I am excited to see uh, these creators grow, and so with the next issue hopefully my problems with this issue will go away where you know it's it's just a simple thing of writing uh, I don't know what I'm saying but it I, I did like it I am in for the next issue so check out that and do check out Kablam printing um, they're awesome they print my comics they I have bought a couple comic books from their website and uh, yeah they they have some cool comics on there check out their inventory and uh, you could get bloodlines through Kablam I bet or indieplanet.com is where their site selling site um, but uh, you could get the issues one and two together on the Kickstarter I'll tell you more about that later next up on my list is Babylon Working Babylon Working is from the same creators as La Fay that I have also backed and so they said if you back LaFay and Babylon Working we will send you a print with the two main characters on it so that's the cool print it'll go up here on my wall behind me I have a whole wall of uh, the uh, prints that I get sent from my uh, Kickstarters so Babylon Working here is from Marcel Dupree, Joshua Metzger who I know th those two on the Twitter. That's probably how I discovered this comic. Um, script by Joshua Metzger. Art by Mannix Francisco. Colors by Rex Locus and Chuck Obach. Lettered by Marco Della Verde. And logo by Ed Lavalli. So, um, let's see. This is not safe for work. There is some adult vision, visuals in here. And um, so I can't show you a lot of the pages. But it starts out with a cult, a religion, and they uh, they put an entity into this naked girl who is strapped to the front of a ship. And uh, once they put that entity into the woman, they capture it into a tank. And uh, so what we get here is these two people trying to smuggle this entity to Earth. And uh, on the way here, there is a group of pirates, and they try to... they take the ship down, make it land onto a moon, and uh, they try to steal the stuff from the ship. Anyway, what the ha ends up is the entity comes out, and uh, then they have to deal with that. And uh, yeah, so it's it's an entertaining story so far of, uh, of this heist gone wrong, and that's all in issue one. Then, on to issue two of Babylon Working. Um, so we find out about this uh, moon they land on and uh, it seemed to have been bought by a rich person who made a space station up there and apparently this rich person knew that something was going to happen he somehow foresaw the future because he had planned on this whole thing happening and there are monsters there and the heist is getting worse and worse the entity is chasing them and uh, there's robots involved a lot of craziness going on um, so yeah that's a clean page I can show you and uh, so yeah that's pretty cool um, that's where uh, so the there's a Kickstarter coming for issue 3 I think it's, it's either out now or it's coming out soon so I I really don't know if I'm gonna be able to back it money wise um, but the story is awesome, and I will tell you about the Kickstarter when it comes out. And, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry that I probably won't be able to give you a review of number three, but I will tell you all about where you can find that Kickstarter when that time comes. Um, so check out Babylon Working. Um, I, will show, I will throw up links and tags on the uh, reviews on my Twitter so that you can find the creators of this and find copies for yourself. The artwork is amazing as I showed you. 
like uh, check out that robot he looks awesome and uh, and it is adult themed so be warned if you are a kid do not buy this your parents will be, get mad at you and um, yeah so that's where we're standing on that one I will tell you more about that when it comes around next up on my list is um, it's called Minx Cyberpunk and Minx Cyberpunk came with a lot of fun stuff I got two trading cards here let me make sure they're upright and uh, looks like I got some stickers here cool little stickers uh, I love stickers they're on everything I own so those will actually be going on the box lid to uh, I'm going to start putting stickers on the lids to the boxes where the comics will be and uh, so this will be in the M sections of my comics that'll be fun and I think this is a magnet so that's pretty cool I'll stick that on my bold tin board fun stuff oh and here's a cool print a little spoilery uh, on it but you'll find I find out what's going on here on this print based on the last page so that's cool stuff a lot of cool stuff in that package and um, now onto some credits here so you know who's doing this this is written by Pat Shand which that's probably why I backed it in the first place Pat Shand makes um, Destiny New York which I'm a huge fan of and uh, let's see little girl which was a scary horror kind of thing and uh, prison witch which I have not read yet but it's come it's coming to me soon so Pat Shand writer of this Romano Molinar is the artist who I think I know that name from some scout comics I've backed blonde and Sabine Rich are the colorists Taylor Esposito of Ghost Glyph Studios is the letterer and this is from Be Amazed Studios Molly uh, Schofield is the senior senior vice president of that that's another reason I um, saw notifications on this on my Twitter feed is uh, I have backed a uh, galactic bounty hunter or was it um, mutant chasers something like that yeah that th those names sound right sorry they're not in my notes but yeah so Ming cyberpunk is a cool little story um, I think the second issue is coming soon and uh, I don't think this is safe for work only because the main character here as you can see is scantily clad I don't know if they're I don't remember recall any swearing Ooh, the pages are a little staticky they are awesomely uh, glossy here though but there is a lot of cool stuff going on in this story um, spoiler warning on this one also I was impressed with the story because uh, I really enjoy Minx's interaction with her AI her uh, earpiece that basically her uh, Jarvis her ship talks to her and uh, it's her AI's named is ba Bastion and it's a futurescape in the story of aliens and uh, bars and all sorts of fun stuff like that and uh, she's on the hunt for a pop singer that came up missing five years ago and she tracks it down to this bar and uh, there are robots, android uh, bar waitresses in this place, all that fun stuff. So she goes in there and um, she finds this pop singer. But what she finds is, and this is one of my favorite things in all stories, is the topic of cloning. She finds that they have cloned this pop singer. And so there are clones of this pop singer all over the stage singing and doing acrobats and all sorts of flashy dancing and uh, it's crazy um, so yeah this story has uh, space cloning and uh, scantily clad women in it all sorts of fun stuff a lot of, lot of uh, things that grabbed my interest and um, very cool so uh, yeah the second issue is not out yet not on Kickstarter yet but as soon as it is I will be on board back in it and I will let you know all about it because everything that happened in this issue even down to there is a bad version of this main character and she is 
on the hunt for uh, her, the main character. So, I don't know if she's a clone or if she just has an image inducer. And there was some, a really cool scene. This is the uh, print that uh, came with it. So she is on the run from these security guards and she tells the ship to digitize her. And basically, the ship says, uh, I don't know if that's safe because usually I only digitize inanimate things and uh, that could kill you. You could end up here without your spleen or your liver. But she's like, do it anyway, they're going to kill me. Anyway, I loved it. Good story. Um, ho hopefully, uh, I will be able to tell you about the Kickstarter for Minx 2 coming soon. So check out Minx Cyberpunk. And uh, I have another print that will be going on my wall soon. That's awesome. Thank you for listening to my rants about that. I've got some fun stickers to stick on things. And uh, now we are on to Mailbox. This just barely came in my mailbox today. So I'm excited for this. There's another magnet from uh, Carnouche Productions. And it came with a postcard, blank on one side. So I could actually mail it, all that fun stuff. It looks like a brain. That's pretty cool. So um, there's another magnet. And here's the comic, oh, a print. Right there, check out that print. It is crazy cool. Ink and uh, looks like paint and ink wash and watercolor all mixed together. A lot of coolness. That's a cool print. And this is the book that it came with, Murky Waters. And this, if I recall from the Kickstarter, it's been a while, is, oh yeah. It is from a handful of different writers and artists. So... When I get to that, I will tell you about that. It is basically an, an anthology, and uh, oh man, it's got some awesome artwork in it, so I can't wait to read that. Ooh, it's a little hard to open though, because it's a perfect bound. And um, yeah, it's got a different kind of paper too. It's kind of a sketch paper kind of feel to it. All cool. Um, can't wait to read that one. It'll go in my read pile though, so it will be. It'll be a while till I get to that one. My read pile is insane. Um, I will have to show you, maybe at the end I will show you a bit of that. Now, on to the Kickstarters. Kickstarter comics and Kickstarter comic are the hashtags I like to use. I haven't used them in a while, but... Oh, man. This Kickstarter is ending today, February 3rd. It is called Live Forever. And uh, it is from a Mexican creator that lives in Japan. And he says that writing Live Forever helped him uh, cope with the loss of his brother. And uh, so this is a vampire story, which it's I love back in vampire. I love reading and watching vampire shows. So it had me at vampire. And uh, the artwork is insanely good. It's... It, it's a lot of uh, black and white illustrations, but it has some red color here and there. And so I do recommend checking out Raul, Tre Trevino, Tre ah, Raul Trevino's uh, Live Forever comic book. Um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, this was on Webtoons before, so if you want to check it out before you back it, it was on Webtoons once upon a time. And... Uh, but, as I said, this Kickstarter ends February 3rd, so it could be gone right now uh, as I write, or as I say this, because it is February 3rd as I'm recording this. So, uh, if that's the case, I'm sorry about it. You could always catch it on uh, Webtoons. And next up on my Kickstarters is Switchblade Stories number 2. Switchblade Stories is a 28-page retro art by Chris Askham. And uh, he's doing the whole writing, the story, everything, the artwork. And it is, in his own words, a retro romance, girl gang, grindhouse, comic bonanza. The artwork looks amazing. Um, it's, it's really cool. The coloring style and retro is the best way to describe it, because it really looks like an old romance comic. And it's, it's colored sketchy and uh, using a lot of cool backgrounds and color techniques 
So, check out Switchblade Stories number two on Kickstarter till February 4th. That is tomorrow. So, if you're watching this, make sure you get on there and check it out now because it could be gone by the time if you wait too long to watch my video. Um, here's another one that uh, really has me interested. As you know, I did the review for By the Time I Get to Dallas 1 and 2 last uh, video. So, on this one, this is By the Time I Get to Dallas, the Creator's Edition. Make 100. Um, so he is making 100 Creator's Editions, and uh, this has the scripts, the pencils, the breakdowns, all that fun stuff that goes into making a comic book. It's 140 pages of scripts and pencils, and uh, yeah, so I'm really interested in it. If you just want to go on there and get the actual issues of By the Time I Get to Dallas, I recommend that also. Um, by the time I get to Dallas is a pandemic story about what if 80% of the population just up and left where whatever they were doing to go to one place and that's what this is. There's a spot on the map outside of Dallas and millions of people are flocking there right now. They're on boats, they're on planes, they're walking, they're just pretty much zombied out. They still have a little bit of their thinking capacity but something is compelling them to go to this place. So check out By the Time I Get to Dallas, the Creator's Edition. It is on Kickstarter until February 4th. That's tomorrow. Check it out. Hurry up before it's end. And um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, Endless Moons is on Kickstarter right now until February 9th. It is a black and white comic like if Star Wars and Zelda were in the same st thing, um, that's what you would get. So it's a Zelda Star Wars-esque story. Uh, basically he described it as Anastasia in space and um, yeah it, sound, it looks awesome. The artwork is awesome and the guy even though it's in black and white the guy has a way of uh, penciling and doing it in cross hatching that is just amazing art. Uh, check it out Endless Moons on Kickstarter till February 9th. I will sh throw links of that in my Twitter and um, let's see ya. Uh, Adventures of Liara Rowe is a not, not safe for work sci-fi. It is a sexy romance story by Jen Hickman and it is 28 pages. Check it out on Kickstarter before it's over by February 11th. Adventures of Liara Rowe, that's spelled R-O-U-X. I will have links to that in my uh, Twitter feed of this video. So. Find Rentnarb at, if you're not following me on Twitter but as Rentnarb, I recommend it because that's where you find all these um, links that I throw. Temerity the Runaway is on Kickstarter till February 11th. Check out Temerity the Runaway. It is a, I read the, uh, the preview on Webtoons and it blew me away. Uh, the, uh, there is a big huge ship and it, it's getting away from being blasted and while they warp a tiny ship uh, drafted in through the warp with them and uh, apparently this is the runaway and he is wanted they want to kill him and uh, it, it's, it was just an I think it was only a six page or eight page teaser uh, preview on the uh, webtoons but man, it grabbed me. The artwork is insane. It, the artwork is by Chad Harding. He is a local Utah. Local, I say that because I'm from Utah. And so, Chad Harding, Utah artist. And uh, Gemma Young is also a Utah. She's the writer of this. She does an amazing job. On the, that little preview, eight pages of preview, grabbed me so good. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to. Uh, check out Temerity the Runaway so as soon as it ends on February 11th um, I will know when I'm getting my copy that'll be awesome check out Temerity Runaway before February 11th that way you can get in on this Kickstarter now Cult Heroes oh man this one every time I see the artwork on Twitter from this I get more and more excited Cult Heroes is on Kickstarter till February 13th and uh, it's from It's Okay Raymond on Twitter and uh, it just looks amazing. The skies are crowded with people in capes. 
many superheroes flying around all over the place, and Colt Hero and Razorblade, Mary, are on a spree, and they are killing heroes left and right. And this is 28 pages, or 24 pages for mature readers, and the art, the best way I could describe it is if uh, David Mack and Jack Kirby drew the same book, this would be it. And uh, so check out Cult Heroes on, on Kickstarter till February 13th. This one is called Super Best Friend, number one. And Super Best Friend is on Kickstarter till February 18th. Super Best Friend is from Jason Inman. He, uh, he hosts a podcast that I listen to called The Geek History Lesson. And uh, I... I backed one from him before, which is called a Jupiter Jet, and I'm excited to read that. I haven't read it yet. It's in my read pile, but I jumped in on this Super Best Friend one because it's cool. Uh, it, so, uh, basically, what if uh, you had a Super Best Friend, well, there's a superhero, and he's running around doing great things and everything, and there's this guy that captures everything he does. Every feat, every kitten he saves from the tree, every bus he catches from a bridge. Somebody is there, his friend is there to capture it on his phone and throw it up onto YouTube. One day he accidentally releases the secret identity of this hero and he's got to do everything he can to set things right, to protect this hero that is his best friend. So, super best friend, number one, is on Kickstarter till February 18th. It is 48 pages. That's a big, big comic. That's like a double page and a giant size issue. And one of the tiers on there, for 200 bucks, you can hear your ad for your comic book on Geek His History Lesson. And I am, uh, I gotta stop doing that. Um, I am super tempted to do that, but I don't know budget-wise, if I can handle a $200 thing ad right now. Um, maybe if I was running a Kickstarter right now, I would probably do it to advertise my Kickstarter on there. But anyway, check it out. Um, you could even add Kick Jupiter Jet to this tier, and so you could get Super Best Friend and Jupiter Jet in the same package. That would be so awesome. Um, I, I re recommend going that route if you have not read Jupiter Jet. Um, because, yeah, Super Best Friend on Kickstarter till February 18th. Check that one out. Now, Ink is on Kickstarter till February 26th. Ink is a second collection of 12 prints that you can get. They're all black and white prints. And this Philip Bond, he, uh, he draws these square 12 by 12 um, black and white drawings for his Instagram, which I haven't seen, really, because I don't follow Instagram. I... I have an issue with Instagram. Anyway, but they are awesome drawings. I've seen them on Twitter. They are pretty cool. His He does a lot of uh, spacesuits and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, 12 prints that you can hang up all over your wall. They would look really good framed. They're all 12 by 12, so they're all the same size. You can even make a grid on, your, uh, on a wall of these. It would be awesome. So check out Ink on Kickstarter till February 26th. This land, number one. Oh man, this is one I am really excited about. So, if you had the power of a god, ancient gods, uh, like Maui and Pele kind of stuff, that's what this story is. Um, ancient gods have awoken in a future New Zealand. So, uh, even though I'm into the Hawaiian culture thing, New Zealand is really close. Got the scent. A lot of the similar uh, mythos, and uh, so I am excited to see this. There is mention of a Maui in this story, and uh, and the main character. Well, there's a lot of characters in here that have the, kind of the same power set as Pele, and so I'm interested in that, especially the way they depict the lava and the outfits and stuff. Where I have my own characters of Maui and Pele, that is really cool to see other people's versions of that. And uh, so, uh, these gods that have awoken in a future New Zealand, they're not happy with the way that they have found their uh, island, new, their culture, New Zealand. And so this is from Hit Girl writer, 
Mark Abnett, and the whole feeling from this, uh, from what I, the preview that I read on the uh, Kickstarter, kept making me think of uh, Israel, is Brother Iz's song A A. Uh, if you have not heard that, uh, I recommend going to YouTube and look up A A. -A, -A. It's just spelled E space A L A space E. It is a song by Israel Kamaka Viva Ole. Um, very good stuff. Uh, but that is the feeling I get about this. That's that's where these characters are coming from in the story. Um, very uh, Polynesian culture and uh, cool stuff. And they've got an awesome looking uh, lava hand, kind of a petroglyph hand pin that I might be getting with my comic book. Uh, I'm tempted. I don't know if I can fit it in the budget yet, but you know I'm I'm a sucker for pins, so I'm I'm really thinking about it. So far, I am getting the comic book, but I don't know if I'll add the pin yet. And, and it's a Aroha Comics pin of the hand petroglyph hand. Really cool looking stuff. And uh, yeah, check out this land number one on Kickstarter till February 28th, and uh, it's got a cool preview. Check that one out. Oh, I got a lot of Kickstarters to talk about, don't I? Uh, Crow Creek is on Kickstarter until March 2nd. It is a zombie thriller following a mysterious outbreak that unravels on a Native American reservation. This has killer artwork. Uh, looking at this artwork uh, made me think of Stuart Eminem, uh, Lee Weeks, Jay Lee. It has a very real Jay Lee vibe to it. And yeah, uh, I know there's a lot of zombie comics out there, Walking Dead and stuff, but this one looks really cool. It's in color, and uh, the artwork has me uh, really pe really pumped, amped, wanting to see where the story goes, and uh, there's not a lot of Native American stories out there, really, comics, that, uh, so it, it'd be it's going to be interesting to see uh, something from this perspective. So that's why I'm on board with Crow Creek that is on Kickstarter till March 2nd. Check that one out. Ooh, and here's one I have backed before. Duplicant Issue 4 is out. Um, Duplicant 3 is in my read pile. I plan on reading it tonight while I'm at Plasma. So Duplicant is a story of a future where a pandemic hit and people were dying left and right from this disease. And uh, their organs were shutting down and the scientist doctor he figured out a way to duplicate organs and put duplicate organs into people and uh, but then you find out that there is a big conspiracy big business is really hampering the way people are after and everybody that gets this duplicate organ they have to they go into slavery because they have to pay off the debt of this organ. They're super expensive and anybody that gets one, even against their will sometimes, because if they they drop dead in the supermarket and then they wake up the next day with this organ in them with a bill, they have to pay off even though they had no choice in the matter. And it's really cool, really interesting way to get to tell this story. The artwork is amazing. I'm on board for Duplicant 4, so check that one out. It is on Kickstarter until March 4th. And, as I said, and the comic I read, reviewed earlier, uh, Vampire Bloodlines number two is on Kickstarter till March 14th. Check that one out. It's, it's going to have, you can get a regular art cover or the Ivy cosplay cover, which I'm going for that one. And uh, it'll be, I don't know if they'll do a mini again, but that'll be cool. Uh, and check out Vampire Bloodlines number two on Kickstarter till March 14th. So that's the end of my uh, Kickstarter comics for now. Um, I just finished watching uh, the whole season of Stargirl on the HBO app and I loved it. It Between that one, well all the all the uh, DC comic stuff on that HBO app have been blowing me away. I'm loving them. I'm now watching Batwoman. That one's pretty cool too and uh, so check out those, Stargirl and Batwoman on the DC app. And uh, I'm listening to the House of Indie on podcasts, Stitcher, 
and obviously geek, his, geek history lesson. And so I'll leave with, uh, if you have a Kickstarter out that you think I should know about, or if you just like a shout out, let me know and I, I will shout out your Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, let me know about your Kickstarters. Let me know about an indie comic, even if it's not on Kickstarter now, but it's out there like on Indie Planet or somewhere that I could buy it or check it out or read it. Let me know. I will, I will give it a look and I will give you a shout out. So that's the end of my show so far. Yep, that's all my notes. So thank you for watching Rent Arb Studios Comics, and uh, I hope you're with me next week. And I do have some plans for throwing some artwork onto my videos, but I'm having some laptop issues. My mic has gone out on my laptop, so I cannot make any photoshopping shows where I'm showing you how I color pages. But I will do some just for a while. I will be doing the artwork on the pages, the pencils and inks and all that fun stuff. And then maybe I'll just collect all, save all the coloring until my mic's fixed. And then I'll just do all those videos one after another. So. That's a long way of saying goodbye, but thank you for watching Renarve Studios Comics. I am Gary Brantner, and out!